seeing all those guys and looking up to all those guys like role models and now being put in a spot where all these kids are coming up to me and asking for autographs. It's really cool to see, just to see that I'm come full circle pretty much with me and just I'm in a great league enjoying myself and just it's been awesome for me. It's been really eye opening. Welcome to episode 229 of Alberta Dugout Stories, the podcast. I'm Joe McFarland. There's been no shortage of storylines around the baseball world in our province recently. We'll start things off by congratulating everyone named to Baseball Canada's roster for the upcoming Pan Am Games qualifiers. They will head to Argentina June 16th to 21st with the hopes of earning a spot in the Pan Am Games in Chile in October. Among those named to the team include Dogs Academy grads Jordan Procession and Matt Lloyd, Lethbridge's Landon Barassa, and current Okotoks Dogs outfielder Elijah Hamill, while Edmonton's Mike Johnson and Prairie Baseball Academy alum Dustin Mollican are on the coaching staff. We have a full story on the connections to our province at albertadugoutstories.com. We've also been keeping an eye on the Mike Soroka story out of Atlanta as he returned to the Braves a couple of Mondays ago. He had a successful first start, but then faltered in his second start and has since been sent back to AAA Gwinnett for more fine-tuning. We hope to see Mike in the big leagues again soon. And the Edmonton Riverhawk have opened up their West Coast League season. You can head to our website as we wrote a season preview story there just before their campaign got started. Moving on to the Western Canadian Baseball League, and it is Oak Tokes and Moose Jaw sitting atop the standings in their respective divisions again. The Miller Express are actually number one on the WCBL's power rankings, which are released every Tuesday, followed by the Dogs and Lethbridge Bulls this week. We won't do a deep dive on the stats leaders this time around, but an interesting note at the top of the batting average rankings. Moose Jaw as Dawson Tweet leads away, hitting at a 542 clip. His brother and teammate Wyatt Tweet is at 476 to be sitting second in the circuit. In other categories, Fort McMurray's Caleb Lemos leads the way with three home runs, while his teammate Alex Escobar is pacing the league on the hill with 21 strikeouts. Now on to this week's guests, and we have a trio of players joining us this week. Sylvan Lake Gulls utility man Matty Fung is among the league leaders in a couple of different categories so far this summer. As we record this episode, he's hitting 467, which is good enough for third, and he has five stolen bases, which is in a tie for second. The native of Foster City, California, is coming off a spring with Santa Barbara City College, and he's getting himself ready to head to the University of San Francisco in the fall. We caught up with him at the end of last week. Matty, thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast. Yep, great to be here. Welcome back to Sylvan Lake. How are you enjoying the first couple of weeks back? Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's super fun out here on and off the field, um, especially when we get to play in front of 1,500 fans every night. Um, I'm just looking forward to another great summer. What was it about Sylvan Lake in the first place that brought you to the community uh, last season? So I got connected with Jason Chatwood, uh, the head coach, with uh, my Boise State coach. I was at Boise State my freshman year when there was no team because of COVID. And the head coach is Canadian, so that's how I got in contact with Jason. And the opportunity Jason uh, gave to me was, uh, come in, play, be a utility player, fill in for guys that need off days, and I, I was uh, good with that. And then I found myself in the starting lineup towards middle end of the season, and I had a, ended up having a good season last season. It's interesting when you get a kid like yourself, being from California, was there any trepidation, one, about coming to Canada, and two, when you got here, was it as you expected it would be? Um, you know, I had some hesitant uh, going to Canada because um, I'd never been out of the country to play baseball. I didn't know anyone up here yet. But once I got here, the team uh, took me in. The ownership was great. Um, the coaching staff uh, welcomed me with uh, open arms. And the team the team last year, um, we all got along real quick when, on our road trips. And even at home, we... Uh, bonded outside the baseball field too fantastic stuff and glad to hear it because that's always the the thing you know when you're flying hundreds of miles away you never know what to expect so we're glad that it all worked out and clearly it's working out again for you i mean it's early in the season but you've got five swipes so far in the first four games as we record this episode you're hitting 462 what's been going well for you so far um being at the top of the lineup i'm just trying to be aggressive at the plate not take too many strikes and uh, work the count, uh, draw my walks when I can, and I'm not going to be 
a guy hitting the ball over the fence. I know I need to keep the ball on the ground and on the line and just find any way to get to first. And once I get to first, I'm looking to steal right away and let the guys behind me drive me in. In talking to a few guys around the Gulls who are returning, they feel like there's some maybe unfinished business from last year. You had a great year as a team but fell short in the playoffs. How driven are you to get over that hump, take out the dogs, and win a championship? Oh, yeah, we're definitely looking um, to get to the championship this year and win it all. Um, I don't know, Benny Prediger promised our fans that we were going to win the championship, but I'm not going to make any promises. But we do look stronger this year as a, as a whole team. Pitching staff has been dominant the first four games, and our bats are going to start to waken up uh, these next few weeks. I was going to ask about that. I know it's a couple of weeks in, like I said. Does it feel different on this team this year compared to last, or is this team just a year older and a year wiser? I think uh, the the returners uh, have a lot more experience this year, and um, I think our pitching staff is dominant last year. It's going to be the same this year, and offensively, um, I think we'll be uh, a tad bit better this year. Um, We have guys speed this year that will get on and we'll let the big bats drive us in it used to be Edmonton and Okotoks had the massive rivalry because they always seem to face each other in the playoffs do you guys hate Okotoks is that the main rivalry now in the WCBL or is it kind of a a mutual respect so far um I think it's a rivalry rivalry um we uh I think they're the closest towards us down south like two hours away um but yeah, they've had our number the last year, and um, they're they're all close games. Uh, we've been in it with them, and I think it's teams that make less mistakes are going to come out with the, the the win. And we uh, made too many mistakes last year, but we're going to try to fix that this year and come up on on top of them. Very cool. On the college front, you're coming off a season at Santa Barbara City College. You hit 239, a couple of homers, 14 RBI, 11 stolen bases in 37 games. Looking back on, how are you going to remember this last spring? Um, this last spring um, was good for me. Um, I started off with a little injury, hamstring injury, so that kind of uh, started with a slow start for my season. Um, offensively, I was still doing my thing, getting on base. I couldn't run as much because of my hamstring, but I'm feeling healthy now, and um, I'm just glad that we won our uh, conference championship this year because that was one of my goals going uh, to Santa Barbara to win a championship. You announced back in November that you're, quote, coming home to the University of San Francisco Dons. First off, how did that opportunity all come about? Yeah, um, I got in contact with the new head coach, uh, Rob Detoma. Um, he got back to me right away. He said he was interested in me, and um, I went to go visit their campus. It's um, not too far from my hometown, Foster City, California. It's like 20 minutes away. So I went back home for a weekend, uh, visited campus. I, I have been there before playing uh, growing up travel ball. We got to play on the USF field, but I had never gone into the campus. And uh, when I got on the campus, it just felt right a small little uh, college um, walk, you could walk everywhere and it just felt right for me to go back home and play so um, my parents could come watch every game. That's got to be pretty cool eh? is being able to be as you mentioned 20 minutes down the 101 uh, from San Francisco and be in Foster City how excited are you for that opportunity to play in front of close friends and family and also more importantly maybe is that next step in that baseball journey? I'm super excited. Um, I've been away for quite a while. Started at Boise State, not playing at all. Then two years at Santa Barbara, um, and then just getting back home. I'm, I love playing in front of my family and friends. Gives me more confidence when I see them up in the stands. And uh, hopefully, I could continue playing on after USF. That's my uh, goal to play professional baseball someday. Mm-hmm. Let's do some rapid fire to finish things out here. First off, your favorite ballpark food? My favorite ballpark food would probably be um, a nice slice of pepperoni pizza. Oh, good call. Best ballpark you've ever been to at any level, whether it be playing or as a spectator? 
spectating. I really enjoyed uh, going to Fenway Park in Boston and playing, um, I'd say, honestly, Sylvan Lake. Not trying to uh, to appease the hometown crowd, but I like that. Uh, your favorite TV series that you just can't help but binge? Um, I like watching uh, the reality show called Survivor. Okay. On TV, CBS, I believe. Why Survivor? Um, just the competition, and uh, I'm a very competitive person, and I just enjoy people competing for uh, for money. I enjoy that. I'm a big challenge guy myself, so. Yeah. Uh, any superstitions? Um, I I drink a Bang Energy drink before every uh, every game. Good grief! That's a. I don't know yeah. if I could play ball like that. I'd just be jittery the whole time. Uh, finally, favorite moment on a ball field ever? I would say uh, this past spring, dog piling uh, at our home field in Santa Barbara. That would be my favorite experience. Very cool. Final question for you. It's when we ask everybody, what does the game of baseball mean to you? Uh, baseball means everything to me. I grew up um, playing baseball starting at the age of four or five. Um, and then I just love this game. It just, um, I don't think I would be able to live life without baseball, honestly, because baseball has been with me my whole life. And it's got me uh, into college and got me, it, it's been able to uh, let me travel the world and see different places that I wouldn't have been able to see if I wasn't playing baseball. Very cool. Well, Maddie, congratulations on all the success you've had at this point, continued success with Sylvan Lake and beyond, and thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you for having me. Next up is Brooks Bombers infielder Ryan Cousy, who's hitting 333 with two RBI and is in a tie for fourth and walks with six through the Bombers' first six games. As a freshman with Northeastern Junior College this spring, he hit 290 with six home runs, 36 RBI, and 11 stolen bases. Cousy was one of the stats leaders with Sherwood Park in the Baseball Alberta Elite League last summer, and the AHP Academy product is hoping to keep things rolling over the next few months. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. First season as a Brooks Bomber. How's it going so far? Uh, so far, it's going really well. I'm loving the team. I'm loving all the guys. I'm loving the coaches. It's just so far, it's been such a great experience. Talk about that change. I mean, you're an AHP guy. You've done the high school route. You've, you've had your first college season, which we'll get into in a second. But talk about that transition into summer baseball. I mean, you probably watched it as a kid, but now you're a part of it. What's that transition been like? Uh, honestly, it, it's, it's been so cool to see growing up, like one of the Edmonton Prospects games and that kind of stuff. And just like seeing all those guys and looking up to all those guys like role models and now being put in a spot where all these kids are coming up to me and asking for autographs. It's just, it's really cool to see, just to see that I'm come full circle pretty much with me and just I'm in a great league enjoying myself and just it's been awesome for me. It's been really eye opening. When going into the season, did you have any expectations of yourself? What you wanted to accomplish? Maybe some goals or or something that you were working towards as you made your way through the summer? Uh, the biggest goals for me are, of course, hit, a, hit above 300 and just have a good season there. And then also coming into this, I wanted to be the starting shortstop from day one. And so far, it's how it's been so far. So those are my, my goals are kind of being accomplished right now, but the ultimate goal is to win a WCBL championship. So hopefully that, hopefully we'll have a chance to do that. I was going to ask about that side of it too. I mean, Brooks is coming off their first playoff appearance in the WCBL uh, back last season. How how important is it for you to continue that momentum? Are you cognizant of the talk in the community and the the desire to see this thing continue to evolve and and improve? Oh yeah, like we want to we want to put on a show for the community as well. But also looking at like the team that we have, like we've got a lot of great guys, great coaching staff. Like we're wanting to come in this underdog team to hopefully uh, hopefully turn some heads and up, make some, a couple upsets, be like the, the ultimate dark horse in the league. So that's the goal for us, make playoffs, and then hopefully, hopefully it makes some stuff happen in the playoffs. It's always hard to um, judge a season off the first few games, and obviously you've had to fit deal with the with the behemoth known as the Okotoks Dogs in the early going here. But talk a little bit about what you're seeing out of your team so far. I know you're still waiting on a on a few key members to come from their college teams, that kind of thing. But what do you see as you you look at up and down your your team's lineup? Honestly, I think we've got great hitters from one to nine. Like everyone can swing the bat a little bit, 
so that that definitely helps us. We're putting up some decent number of runs per game, and honestly, our pitching staff, like the guys, just want to compete. That's that's the goal of baseball: just compete, compete your ass off, and just work as hard as you can. And that's what we get from most of the guys in the pitching staff. Everyone's just working to compete, getting getting ground balls, getting outs. So if we keep could continue to do that, keep growing more as a team, keep getting the chemistry that we were looking for, I think we're going to be able to to make some cool stuff happen this summer. We had Coach Estrella on last week's episode, and a really smiley guy. What's it like learning and being coached by him? Oh, well, Coach Estrella is an awesome dude. He, uh, he, keeps, he keeps the environment fun at practice and like all, during all the games. His positive attitude really like has an effect on like what we're doing as a team and stuff like that. Where if you make a mistake, like mistakes happen in games. Like he just he keeps you up and keeps you motivated and confident in yourself, which is honestly one of the biggest things in baseball. So. Coach Estrella is doing an amazing job with the boys so far. Fantastic. Um, you had a great season, as mentioned, over at Southeastern. Talk a little bit about the experience from your standpoint and what you took away from that first season of college ball. Uh, first season of college ball, going in as a freshman, uh, I had no idea what to expect going from high school to college. It's a, it's a, it's a bigger jump than most people would assume, even at the JUCO level. And uh, it, was, it was an absolute blast. Made some, honestly, some lifelong friends. And just the season we had, it was pretty good. We got upset in the first round, but other than that, it was it was a great season, great learning curve. Uh, hit pretty well. I, I honestly surprised myself a little bit with how well I hit. And uh, the coach over there was also amazing. And uh, hitting-wise, I also did pretty good. And then fielding-wise as well, I uh, earned a spot at the starting shortstop for a bit and then bounced around from second to short throw the rest of the season. So... It was good to play a lot, too, and get a lot of experience my freshman year. You mentioned the bat, 296 home runs, 36 RBI, 11 stolen bases, 48 games. It's a pretty good freshman season. How do you build on that heading into season two? Uh, honestly, to build on that, I'm just going to try to become more, more consistent with the plate. I went on a, on a stretch there for a bit where uh, I went in a little slump, but those happen from time to time. But next year, I'm just looking to eliminate the slump that I had and just hopefully – Keep it above the 300s, maybe 350s. That's, that's the goal for me. I have a feeling there's probably going to be a conversation or two between you and Taylor Burns as well over at AHP. Talk about his influence and in being able to uh, utilize not only him, but some of the other minds that uh, they have down there. Oh, yeah. T- Taylor single-handedly uh, built me as a baseball player I am today. Uh, I went from a skinny kid who played football and had dreams of playing college football and then came to the realization that I have a better future in baseball, and Taylor saw that within me. So my whole career has been based off of Taylor Burns, and like he got me stronger in the gym, and he like allowed me to realize what I could do with myself in baseball. And then all the other guys at HP too, like Connor Burns, he's the one who helped me with my swing all the time. And then Ethan Elias, who was also my center ball coach on the Shirt Park Dukes, um, he was a great guy who just helped me help pave the path for me to become a college baseball player as well. So I've got nothing but great things to say about the guys at AHP and I owe them absolutely everything. Do you have any feelers out there yet as far as the next step beyond Southeastern or are you still kind of feeling things out at this point? Walk us through the mindset going thinking beyond the JUCO level. Um, as of right now, uh, I haven't really got any big hooks yet for schools past the, past the JUCO level but I, I am going on a visit here pretty soon. Well, not a visit but going to a camp here pretty soon at the University of Memphis. So hopefully go in there to show what I can do and then hopefully come back with an offer to play Division One baseball, finish the dream. Very cool. Uh, a few rapid-fire questions to wrap things up here for you, Ryan. First off, favorite ballpark food? Oh, uh, definitely nachos, 100%. Nachos, 100%. Uh, hot peppers or no on those nachos? Oh, hot peppers for sure. Uh, you had me until that point. That's all right. Uh, your favorite ballpark, whether it be one that you played in or maybe one that you visited? Uh, played in, definitely uh, Seaman Stadium. It's just a great, great environment. And then been to uh, Anaheim Angels Stadium. Oh, very cool. Favorite baseball memory? Um, hitting my first bleacher home run. That was, that was really cool for me. What about that was so uh, memorable for you? Uh, it was the bottom of, I think, the sixth inning in the seventh inning game, and uh, we were down three, and I hit a three-run home run for my first one ever to straightaway center, and the boys were just super hyped for me, and it was just a, it was a memory I'll never forget. It's one thing to be able to hook one, right? Go down the line, it's another to go straightaway center field. Like, that's a pretty good feeling, right? Yeah, 100%. Awesome. When you're in your pregame routine, what music is in your headphones? 
Uh, you use some rap, some little baby, but also I like to mellow up with a little bit of country too, just keep the nerves down, just let let myself know that it's just a game, have fun. It's not that serious at the end of the day. I tell you, the eclectic mix that some ball players have is just. Some are hardcore one or the other, and yet some are just all over the map. So that's kind of cool. Uh, finally, the last one for you on the, the rapid fire point. Best baseball advice you've ever received? Be confident in yourself. I used to struggle a lot with confidence uh, playing baseball. And at the end of the day, you just got to believe in yourself and know that you can accomplish anything. And that's the biggest thing that will help you down the line. Confidence is key 100% couple of serious ones for you what's it mean to you to be able to play ball at the summer college level uh within the wcbl and and being able to do it in your home province oh it's 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 like the coolest thing ever just i like i said uh, earlier being a kid going to the games and looking up to all these guys and then having it come full circle with me playing in this league it's just it's really cool for just to be a part of that and just hopefully have the same impact those older guys had on me on these uh the, the new the newer junior generation how weird is it to get an autograph request? It's the first one was definitely weird. I definitely messed up that signature pretty bad, so a little nervous. But the more you do it, the better it gets. So it's, it's getting better so far. Practice makes perfect, just like the uh, yes, plate, right? Yes, sir. Fantastic. Final question for you. I'm sure you probably know this one. Uh, what does the game of baseball mean to you? Oh, it means everything to me. Uh, it was something to do with like my escape growing up, but now it's just still my escape from reality but i just it's probably one of the best things that ever happened to me is being able to go out and ball with my friends and it's just it's just amazing fantastic stuff ryan well congratulations on all the success you've had at this point continued success going forward with brooks and beyond and thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast thanks so much for having me and finally adam golby is a little closer to home this summer than he was in 2022 a WCBL All-Star with Swift Current last summer, the Coronation Alberta product is calling Medicine Hat home now, getting in two starts with the Mavs so far, posting a solid 2.79 earned run average and 10 strikeouts in nine-plus innings of work. A freshman with Indian Hills Community College this spring, he posted a 4-3 and record with a 6.42 ERA and 11 appearances, including eight starts. Golby's hoping to stay on that upward trajectory heading into the summer. Adam, thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you. It's uh, good to be on here. Now you're back home in Alberta, not too far down the road from your hometown of Coronation. What have your first few weeks been like as a member of the Medicine Hat Mavericks? Uh, it's been good. I got home from uh, Indian Hills there, and then now I'm back. And then I moved right to Medicine Hat. There's a good city down here and stuff, so... Mm-hmm. How nice is it being able to play semi close to home? I mean, you're still not a stone's throw away from home, but at least they can maybe stop by once in a while and check you out playing. Yeah, it's good if they can come watch again. I mean, obviously they did when I was little, but it's good for them to come back and watch. Take us back to last Friday, June 2nd, your first start at Athletic Park for the Mavs, and it happens to be against your old team, the Swift Current 57s. What were the emotions like going in, into that one? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It wasn't It wasn't too bad at the start. I kind of was a little worried about it for some reason, but kind of settled in okay. Did you have any uh, chirping going on at all, or did you have much for old teammates that you were able to chat with pregame at all? Uh, yeah, in BP there, we talked a little bit, but it wasn't too much. I'm curious, are you the strong, silent type in a situation like that? Are you the one talking up a storm as you're racking up the outs and eventually the team gets the W? <laughs> no, I don't I don't say too much. <laughs> I'm just pretty focused on just pitching. Mm-hmm. Looking at this Mavs team this season, what do you see when you look up and down that roster? That's pretty good. I mean... We're just trying to win every game we can. Heading into the summer, did you have any goals or aspirations, things that you kind of set out for yourself uh, heading in and, and wanting to accomplish before the, the summer's out? Uh, no. I mean, just get better, I guess. I'm not too worried about you know stats and all that kind of stuff. Just trying to become better, help the team win. What kinds of mechanical things were you hoping to work on, or are you looking to work on anything, or just try to try to make sure that that arm is in good work and shape uh, heading into the the fall, and then obviously this the next spring season. Yeah, I mean, just stay healthy, I guess, obviously, for the fall. But um, it's not 
I think just trying to be the same guy every time I go out there. You're coming off a pretty solid freshman season with Indian Hills, going four and three and eleven appearances, including eight starts. You even had a one hitter against Ellsworth back on in late March. There, um, looking back on the spring as a whole, how would you rate your performance? Well, I mean, it wasn't wasn't too bad. The start was good, and then kind of towards the end, I wasn't quite as good. But I don't know. I wasn't too happy with it, honestly. Mm. So what would you like to improve upon or what kinds of things do you need to work on to make sure that it's better heading into next spring? Um, I don't know. Just, I guess, just being the same guy, like, sometimes it's just not quite as good. I'm just trying to be good every time. I know you were growing up a two-way guy. You're even listed as a pitcher and an infielder at Indian Hills. Are you jonesing at all to get an at-bat or two before the college career is done? <laughs> Last summer, I got a couple in the in the league there when a couple of players had to leave. But no, I think now I kind of just worry about pitching. Mm. Walk us through that decision because uh, I know at Badlands you were you were on plenty of videos and that kind of thing about sort of the work that you were putting in. What made you decide to go the pitching route? Um. Well, I got to school and then my coach just kind of said like, um, "That's what people want." is a left-handed pitcher that can find a bat anywhere. Like, just trust me, I guess, mm-hmm. just be a pitcher. How have you acclimatized to that? Has it been a bit of a challenge to not do both, or have you gotten into the, the frequency and, and the cadence fairly easily? Um, well, I kind of had a feeling, like, after the summer last year, last year, because, I mean, I didn't really hit. I, like, practice hitting, but not many in-game at-bats, I guess. Mm -hmm. So, just pitching there, it wasn't too bad. I mean, kind of get used to it pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that getting a chance to hit thing, have you brought that offer out to uh, Coach Goodman yet with Mavericks? (laughs) No, I haven't said anything. (laughs) Because that would be fun to see. I mean, you, you said you've done it at the WCBL level, so why not give it a shot? Hey, take us back a little bit. Growing up in Coronation, what was the ball scene like and what got you into the game in the first place? I mean, I think I was just always playing sports, like, whenever. Like, it wasn't always baseball, mostly. It was probably more hockey, honestly. And then just played on the local teams or whatever. Just always having fun and then wanted to take it to a better level i guess and then i went to uh cameras play triple a and then the east central bulls had a team there and then they changed to the wranglers so i played there and then went down to badlands and off to indian hills do you remember the moment where you said okay maybe this is more than just a fun game and hey i might actually have a chance at at making a, a go of this at the college level um, I think since I was little, I wanted to play like a higher, higher level sport. I don't know what sport, I guess, but just having that. Were you torn at all, especially given, I mean, Alberta's a, a hockey province, Canada's a hockey country, and, and you played the game as well. Were you torn at all, or, or was baseball a pretty easy decision to make? Uh, I guess at the time, it was an easy, easy decision to make, but... Once you go watch a game or whatever, you kind of miss it, I guess. A few rapid-fire questions for you to wrap things up here. First off, let's say you're coming out of the bullpen and you get to pick your own entrance music. What's your tune? Uh, probably Hell's Bells. ACDC, I gotta love it. Uh, <laughs> best part about growing up in Coronation? Uh, safe, I guess. Your favorite or your go-to pregame meal? Uh... Honestly, I don't know. We're on the road a lot. kind of <laughs> switches up every time. <laughs> not married to any one thing. It's not like you're you're hammering in on one meal. All right. Uh, <laughs> this one's a fun one, if you remember it. Uh, when you're in the cages, shoes or no shoes? Shoes. <laughs> Reason I point that out, if you go to the Badlands Facebook page from like 2020 or maybe 2021, uh, they kind of poked a little fun at you for not having your shoes. So I thought I'd ask that one. Uh, finally, best baseball advice you've ever received? Uh, just play the game for the right reason. Mm-hmm. Final question for you, Adam. What does the game of baseball mean to you? Uh, everything. I mean, it's kind of just shaped my life so far.
Very cool. Well, Adam, really appreciate the time. Congratulations on all the success you've had at this point. Continued success going forward. And thanks so much for joining us here on the podcast. Thank you. Thanks again to Maddie Fung, Ryan Cousy, and Adam Golby for joining us this week. And thanks to all of you for downloading and listening. If you like this or any other episode, make sure to leave us a rating and review on your podcast app to help spread the word about ADS. We'd also like to tip our caps to our Platinum supporters for all they do for us and for baseball in Alberta. The Okotoks Dogs and AHP Academy have been very generous in helping us tell the game stories in our province. For more on our outstanding teammates and to get involved with your own organization, head to albertadugoutstories.com slash supporters. Until next time, thank you for all of your support online, on social, and on air of Alberta Dugout Stories.